pressure. Sorry. That's okay. I really often get the impression that students think that they have to be, I'm going to major in this. And even at age 16, relatives, school people start asking them that. And I'll tell a little, a wee story of a, a former colleague who uh, I was in a session with this colleague and, and students. Um, he said, what's your relative major? This was with prospective students, Dominic. What's your relative major? And people looked at him quizzically. And, and then he said, I mean, the major you tell your relatives at the graduation party so they get off your back and quit, quit asking you about it. There is so much pressure for uh, young people and people's Jill's age and people my age in all of time to be able to tell people what you're going to be when you grow up. I mean, you, you hear those voices in your, your head. And um, I think sometimes that puts undue pressure on our students to think that they have to be, have this kind of passion for a major and they have to have this, that, and the other thing, and they have to know their pathway. Ripon College is the kind of place where there are some of us who know exactly what we want to major in and we follow that trajectory and everything's great. And maybe we end up taking a course someplace else along the way and that helps inform interest and we end up doing a second major or a minor or just a little bit more coursework that then helps us later on in life that or just um, either in our professional life or maybe in our avocational life. Ripon is a comfortable place. It's one of the messages I want to get across. Um, both you and Dominic, and I think when Caleb comes on, according to his mom, he seems to be interested in econ and business too. Yet the econ and business world, you probably are going to work inside some kind of industry. I know I was just in conversations about um, the people, the kind of positions in the business end of the sports world. You know, a lot of student athletes um, want to go into, you know, want, they enjoy sports and they pay a lot of attention to it. And a lot of the people that, that work in the sports world, maybe they were student athletes when they were growing up, but maybe they weren't, maybe they were fans. And um, yet they are interested in that industry. So they're an accountant or they're this, or they're that, or they do marketing. And so um, the context, and that's one of the ways that a liberal arts education and a Ripon can inform and help you find the place. Another example of that is to the music industry. You know, there's a few people perform and, and then there's a whole lot more people that support that and manage that, the business end of the operation, the public relations end of the operation. And so if you're at Ripon, say you major in a business management or economics or finance, one of the fields in that department, um, you'll still have the opportunity to learn things in other areas. And you never know how that is going to make your candidacy for a job to have that kind of experience uh, come to light. Not to mention in all of our courses, students learn content and they learn the fundamental skills that graduate schools and employers are always looking for and that's reading, the availability uh, and ability to read, ability to write, ability to listen, communicate, both in oral presentation, you know, to a larger group of people or one-on-one -on -one people, or and uh, do quantitative reasoning and so forth. So all of these things are tenets of our curriculum. Now the structure that allows that one, which you've probably heard about is, and Jill's going to say, it's the Catalyst curriculum. It's our general ed model that is very um, organized and prescribed. And so you don't have to worry. We are, we are lifting up the same skills that we know employers and graduate schools want and have them available in, and, and as the learning goal in all of these courses. But because of the way we have configured the general ed requirements, the students um, are able to take all kinds of other stuff. And so a large chunk of our students, maybe as, as many as a third of a graduating class will actually complete another major or they'll do a minor. And that is a hallmark. So if you've, um, a lot, as you get into the curriculum and maybe you discover an interest in philosophy because most students are never able to enjoy, uh, to study philosophy in high school, like, wow, that's really interesting. 
and you end up um, taking enough courses to get a minor or maybe even a major. The other piece, uh, I'm going to pause right here. Uh, I'm wondering, Ms. Belter, is, is Caleb with us yet or not quite yet? I'd say not. Okay. Caleb is here. We're, we're in here, but. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> Hi, Caleb. <laughs> Hi, Caleb. Um, maybe, Dominic, you want to introduce yourself to Caleb and, and vice versa? Mm -hmm. Is there was... someone? There he is. Oops. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's kind of there it is. So, uh, hello, Kayla. My name is Dominic from Drivets, considering Rippin. Caleb, you are yeah. you live? <laughs> tell him where. Oh, there it was. Oh. Caleb is from Hager City. I don't know where that is. We're really close to the um, Red Wing, Minnesota border. Got so it. we're six miles from that. We're, our internet got funny when we got towards it or turned our video on. So that's okay. That's why we don't have it on always. So. No worries. No worries. <laughs> we totally understand. Not to worry, please. So, Caleb, I'm Michelle Whitler. I'm Associate Dean of, of Faculty and Registrar. And Jill? I'm uh, the event coordinator for the admission office. So, um, this is our new events how we do things now. So welcome, Caleb. So we're Caleb, really Caleb's enrolled for the fall and uh, Dominic, we have to convince yet, right? <laughs> we're, we're really glad that you're with us uh, yeah. today, Caleb. And so I, I was talking about the opportunities at Ripon. I think your mom shared that you're probably interested in business and econ. You share that interest with Dominic, but there um, I'm wish to speak about, and I was at the point to talk about that Ripon is a really comfortable place if you don't know which area you want to major in. And a chunk of our students don't. And so, um, and also our faculty and staff, they understand that. There's a chunk of students that come and say, I'm gonna major in this, and then they change their mind. And that's an important thing to understand too, that it's really comfortable to change your mind. And we have lots of students that do that as well as they, because there's so many subjects a student cannot study in high school that they have access to at a college or university. And so sometimes, you know, maybe you've never, most students have never been able to study anthropology. Um, and so they take a course like, wow, this is interesting. And I'm gonna be a business major, but I could also do anthropology or do an anthropology minor. So that is the kind of, um, opportunity that and the comfort level that exists here. Um, uh, Jill, I don't know if you want to comment on that aspect of that. Sure. And what I might do at some point here is share my screen because I pulled up, we call them our one sheets or they're, they're basically a major and it shows you a sample eight, eight semester course schedule. And when I'm looking at it, what's interesting again is that there's like 14 spaces for you to take any class you want on campus, which could be like Michelle said, a major or a minor, or it could be you take history, you take art, you take political science, you take philosophy, and just to you know dabble in those different areas, you have lots of time for that. And also means as for a multi-interested student, you can do that right off the get-go. Um, I'm just gonna quick um, share the screen so you can see what I'm referring to. And hopefully you can see my screen, is that, the sample semester. Am I right, Michelle? Yep. Yep. Okay, perfect. So as you can see, again, the, the red is showing you what is required for a business management major. And then the blue is the catalyst that we may, we have you take as a general, our ed education requirements. And then of course, the tan is your choice. So like I said, you could do many other things um, besides that. But that's just, again, a reference point for you as any student if you think I might want to do business, you can see how you can take the business 110 the first semester, try it out. And maybe you're like, mm, not what I thought it was, or maybe I really do like it. And now you can take more of those. So it really does have a lot of flexibility for you. The other way that um, our campus embraces students who are multi-interested is in the co-curricular program. And that is that there are many opportunities to participate at some colleges and universities say in order to participate in the investment club, you have to be a major in business and econ, not so. 
If we had an investment club, all students would participate in it as an example. Um, if in addition, uh, many of our students um, have had experience and enjoy music and theater in uh, high school, yet they do not want to major or minor in music or theater, but they participate in that as a co-curricular activity. And that is another way that Ripon College supports the multi-interested students. Of course, there's a, a whole range of opportunities from student senate. I'm thinking about a, a person who was the, was the president of our student senate and he, he was, uh, one of his majors was politics and government and he ran for uh, local office, I mean, you know, real local office. There also was a number of years back that a, a Ripon College student was actually the mayor of Ripon, elected the mayor of Ripon. And so that's, that kind of opportunity is available within the co-curricular program. Um, um, in in um, the curricular program, internships uh, provide that opportunity to explore areas that aren't necessarily uh, in your major or minor. And for example, most colleges allow internships, some require them for different majors and minors, but you have to be a junior or senior to do that. At Ripon, a student can do an internship at the first year level. You do not have to wait and you can do it. There aren't prerequisites and that sort of thing involved that if uh, a student has an interest and can design a project with a faculty member, they can enroll in that kind of course. And so that's another way that Ripon College supports students who are multi-interested. Dominic, I'm wondering what were, if you tell me, would you share with us the favorite classes you're taking this year? Sure, so while I'm not, I don't really hate any particular class, I've, 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 I find myself particularly interested in history classes and math classes have both been I've both been particularly fun for me and I'm looking forward to see how I can potentially explore that in the future. Great, thank you for that answer. I know um, my colleagues in history, the faculty in history remind me all the time that the teaching and learning of history at the college level at a place like Ripon where you have real faculty members in the classes um, is very different than at the high school level. And I, I know a lot of great history teachers but they don't have as much control uh, at the high school level, they don't have as much control over the curriculum as a faculty member does. And so that's really interesting. And if you were to pursue um, e economics, there's a history of economic thought that's required for our major. And I was just talking with Professor Hauge who teaches that course this semester and how there's a big chunk of it that is really a humanities kind of course because it is looking at the history of how the theories and ideas relative to economic systems has developed. And uh, he shared with me that sometimes students, as often students in econ and business are, they might come from a quantitative background and as you said, enjoy that math aspect of it and maybe don't have the interest that you have. It's like, um, I don't want to write, I don't want to read any books. I don't want to read any literature. I don't want to do any of that kind of stuff. I'm a numbers person. And so sometimes those students with that kind of bent, when they get into that history of economic thought, they're like, whoa, we're doing humanities here. That's, that's another way that the college uses this idea and, is, and can be the kind of place that a multi-interested student will, um, will thrive. Because even if you, you know, maybe you'll major, double major in history, maybe you'll minor in history, or maybe not but you're still gonna get dabbled. You're gonna get some of it in other courses. How about you, Caleb? What kind of, um, what's your favorite courses this year? Accounting and math, he says in the chat. Oh, he did. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't look at the- That's okay, I got it. Business in general. Oh yeah, no, I didn't. I don't have access to that in the chat. Um, business in general, great. And so you've taken accounting and he said math as well? Yes. That's great, that's great. We were, uh, earlier Dominic and I were talking and he was able to take an economics course at his high school. Were you able to do that, Caleb? And we'll, let, we'll rely on Jill to re relay the chat to us. <laughs> 
Yep, he says yes. Okay, so you both of you have an idea about, about that. Well, in your interest in Professor Hermami will talk about this, you will of course be taking accounting mm -hmm. uh, if you're a business major. And of course, mathematics um, mm -hmm. is fundamental and um, students in the business and econ majors or finance majors do take mathematics. There's, there is a course, Professor Mommy happens to be teaching it right now on quantitative reasoning and thinking. And, and many of the business and econ majors take more mathematics uh, mm -hmm. background than that. Um, so it sounds like both of those uh, interests can, would mm -hmm. be served quite well here, Caleb. Okay, you tipped the hand, Dominic, and you said there's no course I really hate. How did mm -hmm. you know I was going to ask you about maybe your least favorite courses this year? Eh, I don't know, just in general. I mean, yeah, and like, and like I said, for the most part, it's not really, there's not really anything particularly bad, except art. That's kind of. You said art? Is it a, <laughs> is it a studio art course or art history? Uh, just just basic studio art. I can I can tell you everything you need to know about how to make a good piece when it comes to actually like drawing or painting it. No. <laughs> Thank you for that. And how about you, Caleb? He dislikes language arts. Okay, so I take that to be probably reading and writing. Is that right? Or maybe oh yeah maybe a literature yes. course. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So the good thing you don't have to take a English, you know, per se at Ripon, you know, you'll have a writing focus class um, in the Catalyst 110, but that can be a variety of topics that you might hopefully find interesting. So yeah. one I always refer to is the Beyonce and pop culture one I know that we've taught in the past. Um, and uh, Women of Note is one, I believe, in the music department, that's a 110. So you're learning to write about a topic that at least you can maybe relate to, and it's not just English. Yeah, that's a good description, Jill. And, and it also, a hallmark of an educated person is learning how to read, be a close mm -hmm. reader. And so that, um, you actually kind of speak to, to my, my history. I was a math and science major, biology, and I chose those so I wouldn't have to read any more Nathaniel <laughs> Hawthorne. I hadn't had enough with the scarlet letter and all of that. And, you know, and of course now I read a lot and it, who knows what, what happened that I steered clear of that mm -hmm. because I certainly do a lot of reading and throughout all of my undergraduate time did a lot of reading, but it was in areas that I was interested in. So I cultivated those valuable reading skills and then certainly in graduates in graduate school as well. I'm wondering what kind of it's for about 430, but I'm wondering what kind of questions do uh, you have either of you or um, Caleb's mom since you're with us too. Is there anything about um, advising that you might want to ask Michelle about that's something that with the registrar's office she's sure. very can, involved in yeah I can speak to that but I'm wondering if they if yeah. it, either of them have a question at this point no questions from it's okay to not have questions silence is fine <laughs> yeah okay uh Jill do you have any question before I turn to academic advising not that I can think of. I In the chat, I put the link to the business management major sheet just so you can see what I was referring to. And again, every major is in there and you can look up everyone and kind of see a sampling of what that scheduling would look like. They're all, again, based out in eight semesters. We have that guarantee. There's no reason why you wouldn't finish in four years and um, get a sense of what classes you might be taking in those, those next few years. Academic advising is a strong, is a hallmark of Ripon College. And um, people who are members of the faculty serve as academic advisors. And um, a student who is coming to Ripon, our students all will participate in some form of summer orientation. Mm -hmm. And so during that time, and the main event summer orientation is for the student to meet with their academic advisor and register for fall classes. Mm -hmm. And that um, all the academic advisors have information. I make the matches of an academic advisor. So 
let's pretend Dominic puts a, his, on his record, it says interested in, in uh, economics and business and same thing for Caleb, then it's very likely if I, if I can make the match given the times and that sort of thing, you would have an academic advisor from our department of business and econ. And so that person would be talk with you directly about what your interests are, not only for the fall semester, figuring that out, but then based on the other things that you wish to accomplish during this so precious time in your life, um, the other kinds of goals you have for the next four years and beyond, help you think about uh, coursework you would take at Ripon College or other activities that you would be involved in. So this person is very different than a high school guidance counselor. This is um, most of the high school guidance counselors have, have uh, responsibilities that go are very different from, um, although they all want to make sure every student in their high school graduates and our academic advisors are involved in that too. This, our academic advisors is an entirely different thing by virtue of not being an, an administrator, but being a member of the faculty. Now, sometimes I can't make the perfect match or what it appears. So there will be students and maybe one, either of you could end up being one of this kind of student that put in their application that they were interested in, let's say biology because they filled out their application in October. And then by the time they get to Ripon College and I've started to register for classes they've decided, you know, I don't want to do biology. They took that AP English class or that English class and said, this is really, really what I like to do. You know, they've had that teacher and, and they've just changed their mind. But I don't know that, right? And so I might match that person up with a biology, member of the biology faculty. However, every person that works with brand new students is able to help the student figure out what kind of classes to take in that first semester and first year. So I want you to have that confidence. We have what is, has been described as a strong academic advising program. And that's one of the reasons is because all faculty can advise introductory students no matter what. Now they might pick up the college catalog, which is right behind me somewhere here, and, and look at it, or they might call me up and say, I have a student that wants to major in Blah, and the person's a biologist, help me know which is the best course for this semester and what we should be thinking about for next semester. Or they might call their colleague in that department. So they might call a colleague in, in English and say, of the English courses that you're offering, and given this student's background, what's the best match of classes? When a student does declare a major or minor, they must add an academic advisor in the department. And usually by that time, they have taken different, have different courses and so they have an idea. Sometimes that decision is based on the specialty of the instructor or the faculty member and the student's interest, or sometimes they just click because all of our advisors certainly advise and work with students from, who are majors in, in their department as major advisors or minor advisors. And one of the interesting things is that um, our advisors, some, the students sometimes when they declare a major or minor, they um, wish to keep the original advisor they had as the first year student. And it's like, well, I've had students say to me, well, I've talked with you all this time, you know me, I like talking with you, so let's leave you on there as one of my academic advisors. And um, so those kind of relationships uh, can continue even if they jettison the person from the system as the academic advisor, they certainly know these kids during their entire time. And when you walk across the stage and get your diploma from President Massetti, your advisor, first year advisor will be in the audience and they will be thinking about, I remember when I met with Dominic, I remember when I met with Caleb and we talked about uh, your academic uh, program. We require advisors to be um, involved in all of the changes that a student makes. So actually the advisor is the one who will enroll you using the software system. You'll, this summer, you'll meet with the advisor and talk about it. And then the advisor will actually sit and, and put the student in the classes. And then if a student wishes to add and drop after registration time, the student will communicate with the academic advisor and then our office makes the change in the system. But that kind of um, 
interaction is really important because that person has been trained and knows how to work with students pursuing the Bachelor of Arts degree, the Bachelor of Arts degree at Ripon, and students that are in this part of their trajectory and their goals in their life. Um, so that, that is a, a view into the academic advising model that we use at Ripon. Good info. Anything from Dominic, Caleb, Shelley, anything that we can answer for you? Um, as Michelle um, indicated, orientation will be about the middle of June. Um, it will be virtual again this year, just given the circumstances, but you'll have information to go through orientation, computer stuff online at your own speed. And then when you complete uh, that portion, you would then meet with an advisor, um, likely over Zoom, and uh, again, choose those courses for the first semester. And then we do expect that when, when we're back uh, in the fall semester that there will be a, a in-person opportunity. I am, I am making the assumption that the public health situation is such that we all feel um, healthy and mm -hmm. safe being in, in more of a normal setting so that we can actually meet with uh, each other in person. Because mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. we'll want to make sure that you know where your academic advisor's office is and that sort of thing. Right, yeah, when you're here those first few days, there's a lot of time to help to uh, gain knowledge of the school and orientation committee to, you know, help understand where your classes and things are. Um, oh, I was going to say, perhaps maybe Michelle, I, I think I know the answers too, but talking about this year with COVID, how we have managed to um, hold classes, the, the mix of them. Do you want to talk a little bit about the online, the hybrid, in person. Mm -hmm. So we have, um, in order to meet the public health expectations and keep members of our community safe, yet to honor the Ripon College tradition, most of our students have been on campus all year. They've been so anxious to be back on campus, but we made all kinds of changes. About a third of our courses in the fall and maybe a few in the spring were fully online which means that they were either asynchronous or synchronous. I don't know what your model has been in your school district, but for us, asynchronous means that the student and the instructor, all students in the class and the instructor never meet together over Zoom altogether, although that the instructor probably will have individual meetings with students um, over Zoom so that there's still that interaction, or it could be synchronous online, which means every class session is what we're doing now. And the instructor might use, uh, you might watch a video of, the, of a lecture, or there might be a different tape lecture, or there might be working on problems that they uh, use the technology to help or whatever. And some use a combination of those two strategies. And then we have fully in-person classes, which are most of our classes. And that was the case last semester too. And in order to make that happen, we um, did all the work to figure out what the capacity could be for students in every classroom and opened up some non-traditional spaces and outfitted them and um, made it so that, and we also changed our schedule slightly so that the students, um, so we have time to do the appropriate cleaning between classes on the surfaces and to dissipate crowding. You know, this when we're making these plans back in August, we knew less about COVID-19 and the public health concerns than we do now. So that students meet in person, we require masks on campus. If you visit in person, you, you saw that. And, you know, we're so proud of Ripon College because our always, even when we've had surges, and there was one point, I think, Jill, back in October, like 20 miles away was the epicenter of the world. Yeah. It had taken yeah. over New York City <laughs> and the positivity rates in Oshkosh, Wisconsin and Appleton up at what we call the Valley were the highest in the nation. And there's one day is the highest in the whole world. Mm -hmm. And at that very time, Ripon College was a very low, like 3% positivity rate. And so our students and faculty and staff had really respected that and conducted themselves in a manner that we're frankly used to. We're that kind of community. Mm -hmm. We care about each other and we're going to take care of each other. And so um, we have, and our students have been so happy because even though it's it's all strange still, it's not like ripping exactly. Um, 
it still allows people to be together and see each other. You know, even the other day, uh, there's a new student to campus that just, just arrived. And the student came to my office uh, because of some of the work that I, I do with students. And, and I put my hand out and I shook his hand. And I know Jill is like, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the first time in 11 months uh -huh. that I actually shook a person's hand. Yeah. And, you know, I immediately, and now we know a little bit more about that. Yeah. And that's not quite as dangerous. And of course we have disinfectant right there and all that good stuff. And neither one of us have tested positive for COVID and we're all fine and everything. But that, that reminded me like, wow, we, that's one of the things we don't do anymore. But right. we will get back to that soon. Right, right. And I think it does say a lot about the community and the campus that we've kept these numbers so low. And uh, you know, everywhere I go, if I see students walking anywhere, I, they have masks on. And it really is um, a testament to what the, the folks are like around here. Yeah. We respect it. And um, I believe the kids all want to be here. And that's how it has to be for now. So yeah. But they've also, you know, student activities has done a number of things, you know, in different ways to hold fun events and activities and things that, you know, again, a little different than what we normally used to, as Michelle said, because there are always a lot of activities going on, but we've been able to kind of flip and, and figure out, well, how can we still do this in a safe manner? So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a pleasing part. And I, I think it's important to say it because again, we don't know how fall will look, um, you know, and Michelle may know more, but it's like, you don't know if we're going to still have some online classes. I suspect probably. Um, and as we go further, we'll hopefully get back to the more normal of everything in person. But um, I think as a student thinking about coming here to know like what it might be like and what it has been like this year. Great. So anything further? Well, I want to thank you, Michelle, for joining us. And oh, hello. It looks like Miss is that Mr. Piasek. Hi. Uh, Donna's appreciate me butting in here, but if I could, uh, could I just say we we uh, visited the campus. We're very impressed with the whole area, the whole campus. Uh, and my wife and I, in particular, were uh, interested in and, and uh, enthused about the Catalyst program. Yeah. I like the idea of a liberal arts education described being very broad and, and inclusive and, and uh, all the things that that, that entails. But um, my question is, I thought I remembered in the tour there was a uh, came up about uh, developing your own major. Mm -hmm. Yes. Read a major. And uh, the other school he's considering is St. Norbert's and they have mm -hmm. a data analytical program. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was wondering if you could talk more about how you go about creating, I'm sure you work with the professors and you create that. If you could do something like that at Ripon, um, uh, that, that program apparently is in high demand, uh, great potential as far as income and, and uh, yeah. uh, getting a, a job in that, that field. Uh, so if you could talk maybe about how, how that would work. Thank you. Thank you. I can. I'm so pleased to welcome you to this uh, mm -hmm. meeting, Mr. Peter Second. And Dominic had shared with us that he is interested. He does like math. And so that's, that bodes well for being interested in data science and things quantitative and computer science wise. Well, we do have computer science majors. So that's one route mm -hmm. is a computer science major. And then uh, other would be is interested in major would be to do a, a minor in computer science or something like that. And then yes, we do have a self-designed major. Now there's two pieces I wanna to talk to you about and Jill, if I need to. No, you're fine. Okay. You um, within the computer science major, there's a integrative one that a student combines another area with. And so that speaks to say um, a student currently right now is interested in art. And so that student is interested in software using to create art. So she has combined coursework in studio art and computer science so that she has access to jobs and rural and that kind of work. So that is one area of way that the college has set it up. And then we have the straight self-designed major or self-designed minor. And yes, you're right, the, it's a longstanding program at Ripon College. A student works with an academic advisor, a member of the faculty, 
comes up with the goals that they have for that uh, major and then finds coursework that supports the goals. One of the great things about a self-designed major is that students have so much ownership for it because they are choosing. They're thinking about, this is what I want to do. These are the skills I wanna have. This is the knowledge. This is what I wanna, um, the methodologies I wanna know. And then they help construct it. And you know, whenever any of us do that kind of work, we have different kind of ownership than if we're just marching to some other kind of plan. And there's always a capstone experience involved. And it's often, sometimes they plug into a senior SEM experience in a related major, and then they do their own specialty. I'm thinking of um, a sports psychology uh, self-design major. And that person uh, took the senior SEM in the psychology department, but was working, had a self-design major. So they had coursework in, in, in sports management and some other places. So that um, we've been very successful at students having just fabulous self-designed majors. I see Professor Hamami has, has yeah. joined us and I'll, I'll clue you in Professor Hamami that uh, Dominic and his dad, Mr. Pusek, act about, asked about self-designed majors yes. because Dominic is interested maybe in data science kinds of things mm -hmm. and or data analytics. And we don't have a major with that title but certainly within the computer science department, we have a major that speaks to those goals, but then we also have the self-designed major option. I'll just quick add in. So um, for Caleb and Dominic, you may of course stay on and continue. Michelle, thank you so much. Welcome to uh, Tom, uh, Professor Hamami. Um, Jaden and Gabe have joined us. We may have a few others. Um, so we're gonna jump into the business section of the academics. I'll say goodbye. Nice to Thank talk you, to Michelle. Mr. Pete if you have other questions. So nice to meet you, Dominic. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Belter and Caleb, and <laughs> take care. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye. So yes, welcome. Um, we're going to just kind of go right into things here. Um, welcoming Professor, and um, I might get a few more kids that are admitted, but Basically, I'm going to turn over things to you, Tom, if you'd like to give an introduction of yourself. And um, if you wanted to ask the students to introduce themselves, we can do that as well. But really just want to kind of cover um, the, the Department of Business and Business Management, and then maybe take some questions from the students. So if that works for you, I will turn over to your hands, okay? Sure. Thank you. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Tom Hamami. I'm one of the uh, faculty members in the Department of Economics and Business Man Management at Ripon. <clears throat> uh, I'm in my fourth year here at the college. Uh, I teach mostly courses related to microeconomics and, <clears throat> and math and uh, business strategy. Um, and I mostly have a pretty good time doing it. Um, I grew up mostly in um, Baltimore I went to graduate school in Chicago, um, and now I'm, I'm glad to be here, uh, weather notwithstanding. Um, so what do you want to do? Should we do, let's do a, a little round of introductions. You can sure. tell me, it's, in particular, if there's anything in particular that would, you would, would be useful to hear about as I kind of go through a spiel yep. Uh, yep. about the department. That's perfect. Dominic, why don't you start us off and just tell a professor a little bit about yourself quick. So hello, my name is Dominic. I'm from Krivitz, Wisconsin. And yes, as you mentioned, weather, not great. But uh, as for economics, I've, I've, con I've been considering it for a number of years. I've been very interested in both history and, ma and math. So I've been looking to kind of combine that in a bit. And I thought that economics could be an excellent opportunity to combine both disciplines. Thank you. Um, Gabe, why don't we start next with you? It's Gabe Zielinski, right? Yes, it is Gabe Perfect. Zielinski. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I will be playing baseball at Ripon, and I'm interested in the finance program at Ripon. Thank you. Um, Caleb? Oh, so we've got Caleb's having issues with his internet and things. So Caleb is from Hager City, Wisconsin, which if you don't know is right near... Um, Red Wing, we're close to Red Wing, Minnesota, and plan on taking uh, classes in business and playing baseball here. And Caleb is enrolled. And then Jaden, and I want to confirm, is it Redeker? Yes. 
Perfect. Okay, welcome, Jaden. Tell us where you're from. I mean, I can see it, but tell Professor. Uh, I'm from Brandon, Wisconsin, and I'm ex I want to go into business management and try out for baseball. Wonderful. Good. Welcome, everybody. So and again, I'm, this is really informal. We can take this any direction. If you wanna jump into questions that you have for professor, we can do that. Um, we did a little bit of talking with Caleb and Dominic on the last session about business management major and how that looks. But again, um, everybody can feel free to chat or ask questions and we can go whatever direction you want to. Yeah, I'm happy to take questions right off the bat if that's what we wanna do or um... If nobody has any, I can just start talking. <laughs> I think I think they want you to talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so like I mentioned, uh, I'm a faculty member. Our department is called the Department of Economics and Business Management. Uh, and there are three, we have three majors uh, and some minors in the department. The majors are business management, economics, and finance. I'll talk about them, I guess, in that order, probably. Um, they all have similarities and they all have differences um, and they're popular with different groups of students, typically. The business management major is, I think, probably the most flexible major in the curriculum, in the, the whole college's curriculum, maybe. Um, the a key aspect of the business major, the business management major, is that you get to design a pretty big chunk of it yourself. So you'll have, there's a sequence of required courses that you have to take, um, but they're pretty introductory and broad. Um, you have introductory, there's an introductory classes in business in general, a senior seminar in business more generally, some basic classes in economics and finance. And then you kind of fill in the rest yourself. And we call, we call that portion of the major, your individual focus. And the way that the individual focus works is that basically, you know, everyone majors in business for a different reason. And you kind of think about what you want to do with your degree, what you're looking to do with your life and put together a combination of four courses from almost anywhere, subject to a few restrictions, almost anywhere in the college curriculum, any department. And um, that combination, that collection of four courses makes up the remainder, remainder of your major. Um, and you, there are all kinds of, I mean, it would take all day to kind of talk, kind of list out the, the different kinds of focuses that people have done, but um, you can choose a focus that's kind of explicitly business oriented, uh, like marketing or sports management or entrepreneurship or something like that. Or you can choose a focus that's way that that's kind of um, a little bit different, like um, arts management or leadership or international something. Um, all, these are all things that all that students have done. Um, and we're really flexible about it. Generally speaking, if you can put together a collection of courses that meets the require the formal requirements for a focus and make even a, a basic, basically coherent justification for why they make sense as a group, you can do it. We 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 basically allow it. Um, and in that sense, our business. I don't know how many of you are definitely coming here, and how many, many people are still considering other places. But um, the our business program is different from others in the sense that it's much more like a business program at a liberal arts college, which is what it is. Um, what we don't have, right, what, we're not, what we don't have is a huge collection of hyper-specialized courses. So if you wanted to come here and do, you know, take nothing but, uh, take nothing but advanced courses in logistics and supply chain management, this is not the program to do that because we can't offer, we, we don't, we don't offer that. Um, we offer a much broader, a much broader program that is integrated with the liberal arts, right? Because this is a liberal arts college. Business is not traditionally one of the liberal arts. Uh, instead, you're able to integrate your, your business major with other areas of scholarship. You know, if you want to, to um, you know, combine business classes with history classes or arts classes uh, or anything like that, um, you know, I've had, I have, I just approved, I just approved a, a focus that had, um, coaching classes in it. Um, pretty much the sky's the limit as far as you can imagine. Um, so that, that's a, kind of a, a major difference between the business major uh, here and at other places. Um, as far as classes that I teach in this major, uh, I, teach, I teach, I mean, not quite 100% depending on semester to semester, but I teach almost every microeconomics course here at the college. 
Um, I also teach a math course that's specifically for business and economics and finance majors. So uh, this is a course that I designed uh, a few years ago <clears throat> that's specifically designed to teach the math that you need for upper level coursework in these fields and not other stuff, not extraneous stuff, um, which again is not something you'll typically get at most schools. Most schools will say, hey, take this some particular class over in the math department. Some of that will be useful to you and some of it will not be. Um, we don't we don't do that um, here. <clears throat> um, so that is that's the, those, the basics of the business management major. It is to be specific. There are nine specific courses that you have to take uh, for 36 credits. And then the focus is four more courses. So 16 more credits um, altogether. Um, I've uh, this is true basically of, of almost every major at the college and also because of the structure because of the structure of the general education requirements at the college it's it's quite easy to, to double major basically anything with anything um, as long as you know what you're doing relatively early in in your path because um, you just you have space you have space to do it professor i i'm gonna throw something out that might be on their minds that you can maybe talk about would be uh, internships that might have happened. Uh, in a business major with RIP and um, things that maybe sure. we can talk about. Sure. So we do not require an internship for the major. Uh, it's not a hard requirement. Uh, of course, we encourage everyone to to do internships. They're great experiences. There's lots of opportunities working in collaboration uh, with the Career Center, the Career and Professional Development Center um, here, which is great uh, to find and do a, a, you know an internship that fits what you want to you know what you want to get out of it. Uh, it's possible to do it for credit. Most students don't. Uh, most most students choose not to do it for credit, um, just because if you want to do it for credit, you have to do like a bunch of you no. Know, there's a bunch of additional work that you have to do, um, which you know it's absolutely possible to do. I've definitely I've absolutely supervised internships for credit. Um, it's an option that's available, but it's not something that we foist upon you. It's not required. Um, that, that's true of uh, the other majors as well, economics and finance. Uh, we don't require an internship for any of our majors. I'll pause for a moment if there's any other, any questions about business management. <laughs> Please ask anything that's on your mind. Um, and for the record, I believe three of the four of you are enrolled. Um, so you may very well see professor in classes uh, your next fall and spring. We still have to convince Dominic. <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're coming in and you're interested in business management, uh, specifically as opposed to economics, for example, you'll almost definitely take um, Introduction to Management, uh, BSA 110, uh, the introductory course for the business major um, in the fall, in your first semester. So. You look forward to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, our economics major. So the economics, unlike business, is one of the traditional liberal arts and we have a very, very kind of standard uh, uh, economics curriculum. Um, it's not much less complicated than the business, the business one. You basically take, there's a bunch of required economic classes, and then you take a bunch of economic selectives, and that, that's pretty much the whole thing, right? You've got required some some math requirements. You have to take that same class that I mentioned, that math class that I mentioned. You, you've got to take that, um, and a uh, course in statistics, introductory courses, macro and micro, some intermediate level courses, uh, history history of economic thought is a required class, and then after that, you basically choose electives. So upper level electives, there's no, like you have to take this specific class. It's just, you choose which ones you wanna take. So, um, and more specifically that's, what's the one? What, seven, seven required courses uh, and then four electives basically is um, pretty much how that would work out. And the electives are all over. We've got economics courses in all different kinds of fields, microeconomics, macroeconomics. Uh, some more more applied fields like we have um, economics of professional sports, for example, um, that can be used as an elective, uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, economics is uh, you know it's a great major. Obviously, I'm I'm highly biased. Um, it can be used for lots of different things. 
most of things, most of the things that you want to use a business management major for, you can also use an economics major for. Economics is also a really common major for um, anyone going into so, uh, other social sciences or applied social sciences or anything quantitative. So um, it's common. It's common for students going into law. It's common for students going into politics. It's common for uh, politics or, or policy more general, generally or nonprofit work. Um, it's common uh, among students who um, are just like, I'm already, you know, I, there's a lot of, it's common to do a business and economics double major, for example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not many people come into the college uh, with economics as the thing that they are excited about. Um, I blame secondary school economics education for that, <laughs> if you even had it right now, not everyone even has it. Um, and that was certainly the case for me. Um, I didn't come into college wanting to do economics and I discovered it along the way um, and realized that I loved it. So that could, that, that sort of thing that happens quite commonly. Um, I know economics is a pretty straightforward major. Questions about economics? Are there specific areas that you students are thinking? What about maybe um, outcomes? Can you think of any students that have recently left and gone into the workforce? Maybe some examples of uh, careers, career paths that they've gone into? Sure, I sure. Know I've got uh, one student uh, who just graduated um, this past winter. Mm -hmm. um, who is uh, kind of launching a, a somewhat promising career in, in politics. Mm -hmm. uh, he ran for office last year, actually. Um, mm -hmm. He didn't win, but considering he was still enrolled as a, a full-time student mm -hmm. at the time, that's still pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, and now he's doing work in political, uh, political institutions, um, all sorts of things. I've got another student who, um, he, was a, uh, he was, by the way, finance and economics and government and politics. Um, I have another student who did a double major in business management and economics. He's now a um, something that we definitely didn't teach him. So some, uh, let me see if I can remember ex his exact thing that he's doing. He's a provision anal provisioning analyst um, for a defense firm. He, um, which is definitely not, you know, we don't really offer courses in like um, logistics and operations management specifically, right? But you know, right, the dirty secret of college uh, is that um, employers don't expect you to learn specific domain, domain specific knowledge in school. They teach you all of it when you get there um, because they don't trust the college to teach you exactly what you need to know, how you need to know it and what you need to do for within the, within the, within the job itself, um, which is why so many employers like liberal arts college graduates, um, the found that they want the foundation that you get from a quality liberal arts education. Um, so even though he didn't specialize in any of those types of things, he now has exactly that type of job. That's just the sort of thing that can happen. Um, I've got one student who is, she is a, a marketing executive, um, in like in Singapore. Um, she was from, she's from Southeast Asia, um, and took her degree back there and now works, uh, doing, uh, marketing programming for a tourism company there. Um, really business, business and economics is really not, these are really not majors that funnel you into anything specific. You really have a lot of options, a lot of flexibility as far as career, career options go. Um, it's pretty up there as far as when, you know, among the majors in terms of job opportunities. And it's definitely popular here. Do you know um, offhand how many students like currently are majors in business? Like how many seniors? Um, so business management is the biggest major at the college, uh, just business management. And then mm -hmm. you can add economics and finance on top of it. Um, so lots, <laughs> lots of students, <laughs> lots of students are majors in the program. Um, it's very popular among athletes, though not, not exclusively, but, but quite, um, you know, certainly I guarantee if, you know, if you are on the baseball team, for example, I guarantee you'll be taking, you know, classes with your teammates. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, the exact number I could look it up, um, but I have twenty advisees, twenty senior advisees myself. Wow! 
um, who are graduating this semester. So um, a lot. The business management in particular is the biggest is the biggest major on campus. Finance is exploding. Actually, we just introduced the finance major a couple of years ago, um, and you know its first year or two was a little slow going. But now I've got um, you know I'm teaching intro, um, sophomore level classes, um, and I talk to students about what they want to do, and lots of them. It's really attracting a lot of students to uh, to the finance major. So I expect that to really grow substantially over the next year or two. Um, is the finance major for like the number of uh, classes it requires is that pretty similar to a business major? So the finance major, five? the finance major is basically, it looks a lot like the business major, so much so that you can't double major in business and finance. They're too similar oh, okay. to each other. Okay. Um, you can double either of them with economics, but you can't double business management and finance. Okay. The, the finance major um, basically looks like the business major, but instead of an individual focus, you basically have class finance related classes. So it's almost as if like the, the individual focus is sort of chosen for you. I mean, you still have some flexibility in choosing some electives, um, but it's basically a specialist. It's like a specialist. It's really um, the major is designed for people who kind of know they want to do finance and want to specialize, intentionally specialize in it as opposed to the broader flexibility that's afforded by the uh, business management major. Okay. And, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to decide the, the, the like foundational courses are almost identical in the two majors. Mm -hmm. uh, so you wouldn't have to make like a final decision about which one, which one you're trying to do pr until pretty far into the process. You can take finance courses first and see if it's for you or not. There are questions that students have. Anything that you're thinking, this is your time. So I know I know Dominic's been here, and I we actually met Dominic when you were here. Um, Gabe and Caleb and Jaden, have you been on campus? Without looking, I know I can find out, but just curious. I visited campus. Yeah. I have visited campus too. Good, good. And Caleb, Caleb has visited campus too. Good. So you've all been on campus. That's that's half the battle, right? To be actually um, on the ground and see things. Um, you know, going forward, um, we will hold more of these sessions. Um, some kind of um, you know lighthearted things with current students. There's one next week. Uh, if you wanted to uh, connect with a couple of kids that are here. And others, we're really trying to find ways to get you connected to prospective classmates. Um, so this is, you know, one way that, again, if you are all here, you're probably going to see each other in some business courses since you all have that in common. So it's a great way to kind of get connected. Um, but we do have plenty more uh, in the next several months. One thing to note is that uh, you are getting a raffle prize ticket for attending today. Um, Caleb and Dominic get two because they did two sessions. So the more sessions you join on, the, the better your chances in that raffle at the end. Um, and professor, you know, this is again, something for you to, to check in and talk to professors. You can ask any of your, you know, your counselor to talk and we'll get you connected with other professors or other things on campus whether it's the you know tutoring or if it's um, student support services or res life you know specifically and I know professors are more than happy to talk with you uh, in this manner on zoom on an individual appointment we can do that um, really just let us know how we can help you so that you are ready to go and and know all you need to know um, I know a couple I mentioned earlier, but we will have orientation is going to be in about mid-June. It will be virtual, but the big thing of orientation is to connect with your advisor, which you all will be assigned, and you'll be able to check out and pick your classes for fall. And again, that'll be in June. And then, of course, move-in date will be sometime in late August. I don't have the right the date in front of me right this minute, but typically the last Monday of the um, month, we typically start classes to give you an idea there. Um, but again, uh, open for you to ask other questions of professor in the business world, anything that's coming to mind. By the way, if you ever have questions 
if you think of questions later about the curriculum, you can, you can just email me directly. Like I don't. Yep. You can find and I will. Answer. Um, as you're saying that, I will yeah. put your email in the chat, but you can put yep. it in there. Yeah. Yep. Um, there you. Oh, one second. There you go. It's in there. Um, I hope I got it right. It looks like it. Yep. Um, other professors, um, Soren Hauge, he would be economics, if I'm not mistaken, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, oh gosh, who else is there? Professor? And Professor Zhang. Yeah. He, he is our finance specialist. So yes. if you're especially interested in finance, he's really the, the best guy to talk to. Right. Um, he, he advises all of the finance majors as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Get those in there. So students, again, any other things that you can think of before we let this uh, session end? Put Professor John in there. Oops. Um, asked if this is going to be recorded and that is, yes, correct, it is recorded. Um, it will be posted, um, it'll upload to YouTube, probably I would say by Monday. Um, we will add these sessions to our website that if you look under accepted students, you should be able to find them as well. Um, if you search YouTube, Ripon College Academics, you should see these. And again, there were several this week. So we did one uh, last night, we had sciences, social sciences, exercise science. We also had, um, something about music and um, education. And what am I forgetting? There was one more on Monday or Tuesday and I'm blanking on it, but they are all out there for you. Again, these live recorded um, sessions with professors. So feel free to check into those if you wish. And you are welcome. Um, if nothing's further with questions then I will um, say that we are ending this session. Thank you so much, Professor, for joining. And thank you, Jaden and Dominic and Caleb and Shelly for coming on board. We appreciate it. Look forward to, to working with you further down the road and seeing you on campus. And if, if you have any questions, you should have my email in the, um, the confirmation emails that went out for this. So feel free to connect with me if I can help you out, okay? And with that, have a wonderful night. Stay warm. The warm weather is hopefully coming soon. We got Gabe coming back in. I'm going to let Gabe back in for a sec. And we're just just ending things, Gabe. Anything final from you that you need? Nothing. Okay. All right, guys. I will let you all get on to your evening. Um, again, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you soon. Nice to meet you. Bye.